and with your spirit. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, morning, Father. My name is Father Giuseppe. Along with Brother Simon, we are here this week to celebrate this Lenten mission with you. And for us, it's a great joy to be here with you. Because it's probably no surprise to any of you to hear that I was not born looking like this. (laughs) The nurse didn't take me from my mother and say, oh, look, another bearded monk. (laughs) But I was an attorney. I practiced law for nine years. But I did not have the peace in my heart that God wanted me to have. And when I surrendered to Jesus more completely, when I repented, when I allowed his grace to change me, my life changed. And my friends, we sang a beautiful song as we came in, because tomorrow is President's Day. We remember this great country, and we remember the reality that this country was founded on Christian values, on Christian principles. And the greatest contribution that each one of us can make is to embrace and to live and to spread our Catholic faith, the truth that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus forgives, that Jesus is alive, that he is God. And the more that we live the way he wants us to live, the greater we are, the greater this country will be. For we know many times we fail, but God is so merciful that he never rejects us. He never stops offering us his hand. Did everybody enjoy the snow last night? Yeah, Yeah, no. Well, for the past two years, I've been going with my dad to Florida in January to get out of the snow. And so I was there last month with my dad, and I was saying Mass at the parish as I usually did. And then the first day that I was there, I was in the sacristy, and after Mass, this elderly woman came up to me. She's walking with a cane and a little bent over because of age, and she comes right up to me. And she looks very serious. She says to me, Father, I need to tell you something. I'm like, oh boy, what did I do wrong? I've only been here one day. She goes, I'm nobody and I'm not an important person or anything, but I gotta tell you something. So I'm like, okay, what is it? And she looks up to me and she says, I love you. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. So I said, oh, okay, thanks, I guess. And she looks at me and she says, do you want to know why I love you? Not really. I'm like, okay, why? Because I can hear you. (laughs) Apparently some of the other priests and lectors aren't loud enough, and with my loud voice, she could hear everything. And so she was so grateful that she could hear. And I thought, isn't that good though? She wants to hear what has to be said. She wants to hear the readings of Scripture because she knows that Scripture is the living Word of God and that God speaks through His writings and that God wants to speak to her. So she said that she would read all the readings of the masses and parts before she even came to church just so she wouldn't miss anything. Because that's how important it was to her. Isn't that a good message for us? Let us all be attentive to what the scripture has to say to us. Let us be listening, ready to hear what God has to say to us. So let me ask you, let me give you a little quiz. What did Jesus tell us in the gospel passage from today? What was his instruction? Do you remember? It was only one sentence. Repent and believe in the gospel. Jesus tells his followers, his disciples, he tells me. Don't take offense, but he's telling you. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent, what does this word mean? It's a conjunction. Whenever we see R-E in the beginning of the word, what does it mean? Perhaps within the word review, renew, rewrite. To do it over, to do something over. The second part of the word pen, P-E-N-T, comes from the Latin pensar, to think. Rethink. Jesus told us to rethink. Rethink your priorities. Rethink your perspective. Rethink how you're living. Rethink your life. And believe in the gospel. We've all heard this word gospel probably many times. Thousands of times perhaps. Gospel. But have you ever really thought? 
thought? And meditated? What does this word gospel mean? Do you know what it means? Do you know where it comes from? It comes from the Greek. And the Greek word means the good news. Jesus telling us to change our way of thinking. Get rid of all the bad news. All the bad news. All the bad news that we've been buying, believing into, and allowing ourselves to be burdened with all these days, and all these weeks, and all these months, and all these years. The lie of bad news that makes us slaves, that makes us fearful, that makes us full of worry and anxiety. He said, believe the good news. Start to really believe. Not just believe, but believe. And by believing in your heart, living in accordance with this truth. And what is this truth of the gospel? What is this good news that Jesus came to reveal? So, I see a number of children here. They're used to homework. I want to give all of you, not just the kids, but all of us here, a homework assignment. When you go home, I want you really to think and talk in your family. What does that mean, gospel? What is the gospel? What is the good news? Because Jesus came to reveal the good news. Well, what is it? Do you know what it is? Do you live it? Do you accept it? That's your homework assignment. Go home, talk about what does the gospel mean? What is the gospel? And the gospel is simply, my friend, that God so loved the world, that He so loved you, that He so loved me, that He sent His only Son, Jesus, to take flesh, to dwell among us, to suffer, to die, and to rise to new life, so that whoever believes in Him will live forever. Second part of the quiz in the gospel today, where did Jesus go? Jesus went into the desert. Have you ever been into a real desert? It's a nasty, brutal place. There's no water, almost no vegetation. It's hot as anything. It's a brutal place. But Jesus went into the desert on purpose. He didn't have to, but he did. And what happened to Jesus when he was in the desert? He was tempted. Wait a minute. Jesus was tempted? Jesus, my friend, was not tempted in his divinity because God cannot be tempted. But in his humanity, Jesus was tempted. Why? For us, so that we could see, so that we could know that human flesh that was tempted in Jesus could overcome temptation and not be a slave to temptation. And don't anybody here try to tell me that you, each one of you, are not subject to some kind of temptation. Because you're a human being, and you will always be subject to temptation. But you're not a victim of temptation. Jesus has shown us that human flesh can overcome temptation. And Jesus came on earth to suffer for us, to show us that when human flesh suffers, and my friends, if you haven't already, you will suffer on this earth. It's unavoidable. It is part of the human condition. You will suffer. The question is not if you will suffer. It is how you will suffer. Can you suffer with confidence? Can you suffer with strength? Can you suffer not being crushed and destroyed by the suffering? And that's why Jesus came to suffer for us. So that we can see that human flesh can suffer. Because Jesus in his divinity could not suffer. But in his humanity, he did suffer. To show us that human beings are strong enough by his grace to endure anything. Anything. The problem with us sometimes is we don't realize how strong we are. We don't realize the power that we have available to us through God's grace. And Jesus died on the cross. Death is one of the most painful and disturbing things that we have to deal with. But he died to show us that death does not have the last word. That life, eternal life, lies for those who believe in him. My friends, this is the good news. And if we focus on this good news during life, through all the struggles and all the 
suffering, which we will inevitably endure and face in life, we do have peace. We have strength. We can walk with confidence even if we're suffering. But if we're looking at the wrong thing, if our priorities are out of whack, then when trouble comes, we can easily be destroyed. Let me share with you an experience I had when I was about 10 years old. I grew up in Massachusetts and one summer day, which was really hot, and I was kind of an energetic kid. And I was in the woods playing in the park, climbing trees and all sorts of things. And I got really thirsty. So I went running home, and I went charging into the kitchen, and I threw open the refrigerator door looking for something to drink, and I saw something that made me happy. A nice jar of Welch's grape juice. Anybody remember these glass jars? They were big, they had two grooves on top to grab it. Well, this thing was so purple and dark and rich and cold, I was like, oh, yes. And I was extra excited about it because normally we didn't have that good stuff. My mother would buy the frozen concentrated stuff. You know that? You'd add water to it. And she would add two or three times the amount of water. So it wasn't even really grape juice anymore, but it was kind of like purple water. So I knew this was something special. So like any self-respecting 10-year-old, I moved really quickly so nobody could stop me. So I grabbed it, I grabbed the biggest cup I could find, I filled it up really fast, I took a big swing of it, and as soon as it hits my mouth, guess what happened? I spit it all out. It wasn't grape juice. It was homemade wine. <laughs> and it was lousy homemade wine. Both of my parents are immigrants from Italy, and the paisans like to share wine with each other that they make, and they'll put it in any kind of container they can find. So on that day, it came in the Welch's grape juice jar. I was convinced that what was in that jar was going to make me happy. What was in that jar was going to fulfill me, and I was going to get it. Nothing was going to stop me. My friends, don't we do this with so many things? We're so convinced, we're so strong, we're so clear that this thing, this experience, or even this person is going to fulfill me and be exactly what I want, and then I'm going to be happy. I get this thing, I get this experience, I get this person. It didn't work. It didn't work. And a lot of times, I feel even more broken more lonely, more empty, after I did this so-called thing than I did before. Now as a 10-year-old kid, I knew I didn't want that lousy homemade wine, so I got something else to drink. But we as adults are a lot more complicated. We go after something, think it's going to make us happy, then it doesn't. So instead of thinking, wait a minute, that didn't work. Let me try something else. No. Oftentimes what we do, and look at your heart. Be honest. What we do a lot of times, yeah, that didn't work. I feel miserable. I'm not happy. So let me go back there to the same thing. And maybe if I just get more of it, then I'll feel better. And we go into this cycle of this pattern that keeps us down, the burden, the bondage, that, keep, that we're miserable, but we can't figure out why. Well, my friends, Lent is the time. It's a gift, a privileged time from God for each one of us to be honest with ourselves, to be sincere, and the safety of your heart. You're not judged by anybody else. You're not criticized by anybody else. But look at yourself and be honest. Do you have peace? Are you happy? Are your priorities bringing you where you want to be? Look at your life. Jesus died on the cross. He gave everything to set you free. There's another way. Things can be different. By His grace, your attitude can be changed. Come to Jesus. For this mental mission we've chosen as our theme, enter into the heart of Mary. Because her peace can be your peace. Her joy can be your joy. This is a truth. This is a reality. My friends, let me tell you in no uncertain terms. Jesus is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is powerful. And if you let him in, he can do something in your heart, in your life, in your home, in your family that you can't do. Because he is divine. This beautiful image that 
we have brought with us. Come on, ladies, Guadalupe. If you don't know the story, I invite you to look up. It's a fascinating story of an apparition that happened in 1536. But if you see the black ribbon that's just below her hands, it's a ribbon that's tied around to her waist. In her culture at that time, that ribbon was only worn by women who were pregnant. In this picture, in this image, the Blessed Virgin Mary is pregnant with the child Jesus. Enter the heart of Mary, and you will have peace and you will have joy, because in your heart you will find Jesus. By turning to him, things will change in your life. Let me conclude with an experience I had several years ago. I was visiting my relatives in the province of Avalima. In the province of Avalima, up on the mountain, there's a shrine dedicated to the Blessed Mother called Montevergi. I wanted to go there for a visit. So I went with my cousin, his wife, and their son, and my aunt. And after we visited the shrine, we were driving down one of those curvy mountain roads. I don't know if you've ever been on any of them. So when we were getting toward the bottom, they wanted to go to the candy store and buy some Torone. Anybody ever heard of that candy? Yeah. It's Italian candy. It comes in a brick. It's really hard. You can beat somebody with it. <laughs> well, they wanted to get some. So they went to the store. They bought some. And as we were leaving, I'm walking with my Aunt Lena. had her in my arms. She has since passed away. God rest her soul. I opened the car door. I put her in the car. I shut the door. At that moment, from my left, in the parking lot, comes walking this little Italian boy. Must have been about six years old. He's a chubby guy. And he was walking just like this. <laughs> and when he saw me, in beautiful Southern Italian dramatic style, he stops. His eyes got all big and he dropped his mouth. <gasps> and he put his hands on his hips. Little guy, this big. And then he walks right up to me. And like a sumo wrestler, plants his feet right in front of me, gives me a look like this, puts his arms in the air, and he does this. <laughs> He was making fun of my beard, little oh, wow. rascal. So I looked down at him and I said, Ma che, non te piace? I'm like, what, don't you like it? And he looked me right in the eye and he says, No! <laughs> at that time, from the same corner, comes walking his dad. A spitting image, maybe a foot or two taller. <laughs> Why do I tell you that story? Not that you need to be a chubby little Italian boy, because you can't. But you need to be like, and I need to be like, that little chubby Italian boy. Why was that boy so happy, so free, and dare I say so confident? Because that little boy knew, without a doubt, that his father was right behind him. That little boy knew that his dad was watching out for him. That little boy knew that his dad was protecting him. That little boy knew that his dad was taking him to the candy store to get something good. <laughs> My friends, this is the good news. That we have a heavenly father that loves us. We have a heavenly father that wants to take care of us. We have a heavenly father that wants nothing more and to pour his blessings upon us. But we stupid, stubborn, pig-headed children won't receive. We think we know better. We think we have to figure it out. We think we know what is right. No, 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 no. Lent is a time to rethink all of that and to realize that we are beloved children of the Father. So let us receive his love. Let us receive the blessings He wants to give us. Let us surrender to Him. And we will experience peace and joy like we've never had before. Let us allow the grace of the Holy Spirit to transform our perspectives and our priorities. My friends, this week we have a beautiful opportunity, every single one of us, to experience this love, this intimate, personal love of the Father for each one of us. Tomorrow night, 7 p.m., right here in the church, we're going to have exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and some beautiful music by a professional musician that's going to lead us in prayer and meditation, a time of peace and calm. Where you can come 
just as you are. No judgment, no condemnation. Here I am. I'm going to have a beautiful talk on the reality of Jesus' presence in our life, truly present in the Eucharist. Because Jesus loves us, He is with us, and Jesus never leaves us. He never abandons us. No matter what's happening in our lives, He wants to be there for us. In fact, He is there for us, but it's up to us to open our eyes and to see that He is there and to receive His companionship and His grace. Tuesday night, 7 p.m., get right like here. Beautiful music, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, we have a reflection on the grace of confession, the sacrament of reconciliation. My friends, let's be honest. We're all sinners. We've all failed. We all have things that we're ashamed of. We all have things that hurt us. But God in His love knew this. That's why He gave us the sacrament of confession so that we can unload, we can get rid of this stuff, we can let it go. Can you imagine that? Look at your heart. Think of the things that burden you most. And can you imagine the possibility of your life how it would be if you, really you, could let these things go? <clears throat> what a burden to leave by God's grace because you can't do it by yourself. And my friends, there's going to be a number of priests here on Tuesday that you've never seen before and you'll probably never see again. Get it? It's a great chance. Unload everything. And Wednesday night's going to be a beautiful, powerful night focused on the Eucharist. A time of healing. Coming to Jesus with our wounds, our insecurities, our brokenness of spirit, mind, body, and soul. And each person will have a chance to reach out and touch Jesus in the monstrance. And to lay your burden, your wound, your hurt, whatever it is, on Him. Let Him take the burden. Let him help you carry that load and let his grace come in. My friends, I make you a promise. Not by my own authority because I don't have any. Not by my own power because I don't have any. But by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. If you come to this mission and your heart is open, I know that you will be touched. I know that the Holy Spirit will touch your life. I know that you will experience his grace. And you will not be disappointed. My friends, Lent is a great time for you to repent and believe in this good news. This good news of God's love for you. This good news that God can touch your life. Come this week. Please don't deny yourself this grace. You won't regret.